Calderon, and I am so excited to be here with my co-host, Ashley. Hi. And with Daphna Mizrahi. Daphna, everyone say hi. Hi. How are you, Daphna? Thank you so much for joining us today. I know we have so much to talk about. We've known each other for a while now, and I'm just so thankful to have met you and learned all about you and your tequila brand and so much more. I'd love to first start off with one of your biggest accomplishments, and that's winning Chopped. Can you talk to me about that experience? Ah, well, thank you, Michelle. And yes, I believe we actually met right around the same time when I had um, won Chopped. And I can say that winning Chopped was definitely a catalyst to my career and where I am today. But I was one of the youngest contestants, actually one of the youngest females to win which was a big accomplishment uh, beyond the winning itself, but more for what we could, you know, give the community and the empowerment that we could provide through that winning. That's so awesome. What was it like being among so many great chefs and what was your experience like overall? So I can say that it's pretty accurate what you see on TV. Um, the day is much longer than what you see. So it starts at 5.30 in the morning and you uh, you meet the other contestants across the street at the Starbucks. So I don't know if it still is, but it was at Chelsea Market, their Food Network Studios upstairs. So you're there at 5.30, not knowing who you're gonna go up against. And then they take you through a series of interviews, ask you a lot of questions and basically take everything that belongs to you, um, phones and whatnot, and then you're pretty much there and when the time comes for the first round they take you out into the kitchen and it looks just like what you see on tv timing is just like what you see on tv and i think it's um it's a very exciting show for sure that's amazing you know um you were so creative in your approach and uh you know i just wanted to know kind of what inspired you to make the dishes that you made and to really becoming a chef overall so the first question i think we should start like how why did i become a chef and it's fair to say that i grew up in a mexican jewish household in mexico for until i was 13 years old and both are extreme in tradition and food is one of the things that that really tells our culture story and when i moved to the us i didn't speak a word of english and i found that i was able to relate to kids in my grade and people that I met in the US through food. And I realized that it was where I found myself being creative, being the happiest, and I can fairly say that it taught me how to speak English as well. So I um, started that journey. I started that journey and, and then decided to go and make that um, more of a profession. Wow, that's that's incredible. I agree. Both cultures very heavy into food. And that's very interesting that, you know, it really helped you speak English. What was that like? I mean, picture being 12 years old and walking into a sixth grade class that um, nobody knows you and you don't understand anything they're saying. And I came from a very small school in Mexico and moved to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a huge school, huge class. I was just another number and found myself really struggling to fit in. And I just found that through food I could connect. And I don't know if it was coincidental or just meant to be, but I did learn to speak English because I watched TV shows and cooking and I could follow what they were saying and be able to replicate it without truly understanding. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. Oh, now, what were the food differences, you know, coming from the background that you had going on Chopped against, let's say, American chefs? Everyone has different backgrounds. But what was that like for you, you know, being having such a uh, diversity in culture? I think it's almost I think of it as a as a library that has many sections. Right. So I am bicultural, not bilingual. And that's a blessing in itself because it allows my my brain and my creativity to think beyond the beyond the normal. Um, to think that I can merge two spices that commonly don't go together, but because I know what they taste, what they feel, and the memories they create, I am able to put them together. So I feel like it's just, it's a library that just keeps on expanding. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Talk to us about the moment that you won. What did it feel like? So I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself. I think I've always been. <laughs> 
and a big challenge. I didn't think I was going to win, to be honest. I've really? always been very positive. No, because I was actually at the time, I had just opened Monty's here in, in the Hudson Valley. And I was much more focused in the front of the house and really creating a great experience for the guest uh, from the back to the front of the house. So that creativity and really spending that much time in the kitchen as the other chefs really wasn't there. But I have always believed in myself and challenged myself. And when the when the opportunity came of being on the show, I took it and it was going to be a learning opportunity. And, and it was. The outcome was, was much more than I thought it would be. And I found that winning Chopped obviously is great. People look at the show or watch the show. They, they follow the chefs. Um, but beyond that, I was able to bring it back to the Hudson Valley. And that's when I started the Kids to Table program, which to me was the real winning. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to us about the program. The program was basically thinking back to when I was a kid in Mexico and how I knew so much more about where my food came from. Um, most of it came from my backyard, if not nearby. And then I had a definitely cultural shock when I came to the U.S. and walked into a grocery store and the freezer aisle was just as big as the vegetable aisle, if not bigger. And I realized then that there was definitely a challenge and that kids here, especially in the Hudson Valley, have the opportunity to grow up understanding food like I did because of how much access we have to local farms and gardens, yet the emphasis wasn't there for the kids. So the whole farm to table movement was huge and it still is. But if you think about it, adults read about it, adults went to the restaurants. I don't know that kids ever understood what it really meant. Yeah. And that's what that's what Kids to Table um, believes in. Yeah, that that's incredible. You know, I do agree. You know, my, my kids, just knowing my kids, I mean, we go to the farm, so I'm lucky to, enough to bring them so they understand. But they still only understand milk cows. And that's it. I mean, they don't right. understand growing. And what it means to be organic and why that's important. And you're a hundred percent right. You know, here in the U S having a focus on organic is interesting because where you come from, you probably didn't even have to worry about organic or not. It was just healthy, wholesome, good food. That was like you said, in your backyard or what you had access to might've been limiting because it was what was in your radius, but it was way healthier for you than what we have access to, which is everything, but it's processed. Exactly. And I think another of the things that we all strive to really understand is the the ability, right, the accessibility for people to really eat, quote unquote, organic. It definitely has a larger uh, money sign. Um, everything is more expensive when it's organic. And if you think about it, it should be the opposite. Yep. You're not using pesticides. You're not buying that extra layer of whatever it is to make them last longer um or the product to change its identity and i think that that's for for me teaching the kids what potato chips came from or where they came from um was very was was a real big challenge and and something that i enjoyed doing that's wonderful um one more question on chopped so um do you still keep in touch with folks from it and what has it done for your career since then Yes. So I went on to do Chopped and won Chopped, and then I did Chopped Champions and came on second place. And from there, although I have not kept in touch with the contestants um, a lot, I mean, we follow each other on social media and whatnot, but the producers and I have kept in touch, and there could be a potential of a TV show in the near future. Yeah, let's do it. That's it. Hey, the Chopped winners, right? Let's do it. Let's Let's see a uh, a showdown between all the chop winners. Would you do it? Not necessarily that. I think I'm beyond the competitive part of it. Yes. I do want to like, it's much more the education that really excites me because there's a lot of competitive things on, on TV already. Um, not that there couldn't be another one, but I just think that it was fun. It was exciting. I did it. Um, other people can do it, but now I really want to give back. That's awesome. That's amazing. Talking about fun things, one of the things that you're doing is a new tequila brand. She owns a new tequila brand, Ooh. Kira Mia. I want to hear all about it, but before you chat about it, let's check out this video. Yeah. 
Many generations ago, the most beautiful lady in Mexico was born. Though the town could not stop talking about her beauty, it was said that her physical fairness paled in comparison to her charitable and selfish heart. She changed the lives of many. But as the years went by and she grew older, truth blossomed into mystery. The passage of time ensured her life in secrecy, leaving some to wonder what legacy she left behind. The legacy of La Mujer Más Bella. Curamia Tequila was founded by her granddaughter Daphne Mizrahi and co-founder Melissa Del Savio. It is a result of our commitment to simplicity and sustainability as well as authenticity and craftsmanship. Our liquid extraction model is recognized by the Tequila Regulatory Council for its sustainability, utilizing steam and water for the purest taste and cleanest process possible. In short, Curamia is as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. We are proud to mention that our company is fully founded and operated by females. Along with Melissa and I, we have five investors who themselves and their daughters have joined. It is all the result of hard work and dedication that leads to success. What an incredible story. I love it. Did you voice that? Yes, that was me. (laughs) I love it. It's so heartfelt and so real. And, um, you know, I love the story. I want to hear it too from you in your own words. You know, why is it so important to you? And why is the brand so significant to you? Sure. So I think, you know, we can start with the name and what it means. Um, Cura Mia means my cure. And you ask why my cure, um, obviously everybody can find a little joke in there, uh, about tequila and whatnot. But for me, it was much more than that. For me, it was going back to those days when I moved to the U S not speaking a word of English and found myself in the kitchen. Then I went to culinary school and kind of found myself, uh, making hospitality my home. But I did question all through those years. Mexico was not seen and portrayed the beautiful way in which I knew it, right? From the food, to the spirits itself, to the people, um, to the culture. And I tried it when the restaurant business, I tried it at Monty's here in the Hudson Valley and kind of did my twist of Mexican food and whatnot to try to really showcase the culture the way I saw it. And it's as simple as serving tacos without sour cream and, and, cheese right we we never have that and funny story as you asked like what happened with chopped and and how did my career grow well i was working with the food network on a tv show and it was going to be a reality show in which i would show that through mexico in the u.s and that was the project that we were working on for a while and in comes march 6th and the world shuts down march 8th from covid And we all say, you know, that's, that's when you sit back and you really consider what your life is going to be and how you're going to make the most out of the experience. And I randomly get a phone call from my childhood friend. We grew up together and she said, look, I know you have been doing a lot of things in the food world and in the hospitality industry, but have you ever thought of bringing in your own tequila? And I said, yes. And we hung up. And then I really sat and thought about it. And that was the second that my grandma came to mind. And my grandma, who you saw in the video, she was known as the queen of beauty in Mexico, not only because she was physically very beautiful, but more for her internal beauty. She was that woman that gave back to everyone in the community. There was always a seat at the table for anyone in need, clothing for anyone in need. She was also the mother of seven and wife to a gynecologist doctor. So everyone in the town really knew her um, in many ways, but more than anything, she was authentic, right? And, And what does authentic mean? Authentic mean being true to who you are, being true to who you are to yourself and to others. And that comes to where do you come from and why are you the way you are and really embracing that and that story or that um thought and idea of my grandma comes to mind at the perfect time when we're all wondering who we are right We're, we're in the middle of this pandemic we have no control over the outcome but we do have control over our emotions and how we're going to 
survive this this time and that's when I called Melissa Del Savio, who you saw in the video. And Melissa and I actually met in Rhinebeck. She, we were doing the Taste of Rhinebeck or some one of those fairs. And she was showcasing a spirit. And I was showcasing, um, I believe it was Rice Bowls from Market Street. And when we met, I immediately had, we had an immediate connection. But we didn't know that 10 years later, we would be joining forces for this movement. So that's really the layering of Crimea. And then as we started really developing the brand, I said, you know, obviously we're going to need funding, but this funding is going to come from strong women in our lives and in our paths. It's not going to come from celebrities. It's not going to come from an institution, um, at least not yet. And we are going to grow this brand carefully. We are going to deliver the message appropriately, and we are going to bring back what tequila is supposed to be and mean to the U.S. Now, we can thank Casamigos, we can thank a lot of other brands for reintroducing tequila and changing people's perspective of what tequila is. Um, as everyone remembered tequila as a bad night in college until the good old Casamigos and other brands really came in about and, and made it trendy. Um, with us, it was, okay, great. We're glad that you love tequila now and you understand that it comes from Mexico and it comes out of an agave plant. But let me show you an authentic tequila that you can have access to, price point that you can share and enjoy and celebrate with and not keep it on the back shelf of your house because you don't want to share it because it's really expensive. And something you can pair with all foods as, um, as a chef that was important for me because... In Mexico, you can have tequila with steak. In the U.S., it seemed to be a, a very unknown and uncommon thought. Powerful and very thought out. That's a great message behind the brand. I mean, that's so sweet that it's all dedicated to your grandmother. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she was beautiful. And it's so nice that you have a photo of her. Yeah. Because, you know, some sometimes you just don't get those photos. And seven kids. That's a lot. Wow. That's <laughs> and, and she had two miscarriages. Imagine that. What wow. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. So now that you have the brand and you've been promoting it, Tell us about where you see, where it is, where people can get it, and um, and you know, is it in the Hudson Valley? Is it across the country? How are, how is it being distributed? Absolutely. So we actually started um, launched in New York as our first market, given the fact that Melissa and myself both live here, and we um, launched Metro New York and Upstate New York. So. All of New York is able to get it. Um, some stores have partnered up with us and have more supply than others, but it always helps when people go and ask their local liquor store to get the product. Now, the liquor industry is a bit interesting because each of the states have their own distribution, and we have our own distribution partner in each of the states. So New York, obviously, New Jersey, we're in Florida, we're in Tennessee. We're in Georgia. We're actually in nine states, opening a couple more. And today on our social media, we launched Massachusetts. Woo! So we're um, Congratulations. we're very we're very excited. 2023 is definitely going to be a huge year for us. We get to include a lot of more people in our team, or have a lot of more people join our team, and really go out there with um, a strong marketing campaign that really tells our story and helps us spread the word about authenticity. Love it. Tell me about the flavor. I know that, you know, I've recently started drinking tequila, as you said, used to be a bad night in college. Now, it's actually really good, and I enjoy it. Um, what does yours taste like? What's the difference in taste? So ours is very smooth, um, delicate, but strong. So it's not a weak uh, tequila. And I like to always emphasize that it does have some citrus notes and it's very herbal as well. So when you smell it, 
it's a lot more delicate of a smell, right? So you're not smelling that masculine, uh, that leather, that dirt, that musk that you otherwise would assimilate tequila with. This one's a lot more um, enjoyable from the nose to the palate. And due to its price, you're able to sip it neat by itself or create a cocktail with it. So we have that, we have bridged that gap from being a sipping Blanco or a mixer Blanco to being able to fulfill both. Well, next time you come on the show, I definitely want to try some, but I'm going to go find some too and ask my local liquor store. So thanks for the advice. I want to share one of the ads that uh, you put up or a reel on Instagram. So cool. It's just so beautiful. And like you said, a lot of times you think masculine. This is very feminine, but also just very relatable to all. And I think that um, the flowy dress, the vibe, it creates such an image in your mind and a feeling like I just want to drink that. Why orange? Orange has always been my favorite color. I um, I Orange and black, actually. <laughs> so I am wearing both. But orange is a color that... Happiness. Um, I think it's a color that it's also non-gender. So we didn't want, although it is a brand that is created and funded by females, it is not a brand just for females. So we were very careful in selecting our coloring here. But um, it's fresh. So think of citrus. Yep. You have some citrus notes in our brand. But it's also that happiness, joy, enthusiasm, growth, um, brightness, all of that comes through the color orange. I love it. And there's not a lot... Like, I don't think of a brand and think orange. Like, I just don't. Yeah. So it's a really distinctive, beautiful color that is relatable to all genders. Love it. Love the inclusivity. Sounds incredible. Um, you know, there's a few other things I want to know about. And we, we, are, we are coming close on time, so I want to get right into it. You do a lot with Fox, and you have a lot of contacts down in the city. What, um, what are you doing now on Fox? I know you're on a show weekly or monthly. Can you talk to us about mm -hmm. that? It was actually a one-off. Hopefully there will be more opportunities, but that one was discussing small business and the challenges that small businesses face. Interesting. And just discussing that and sharing. I do do a lot of events where I meet with other business owners, other founders, other CEOs. Yesterday, funny enough, I had a women in investing um, dinner. And these dinners are great because it's not a competition between it between us. It's more of a share of knowledge and wealth and uh, information. And I think that the more we do like that, especially as women in business, um, the more we really can can push this along and, and create a different environment for ourselves. Yeah, and you told me about a women's um, business group, networking group, and I, I definitely want to share that as well. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, so actually, Luminary, it's called Luminary. It's in New York City and a couple other cities. It was introduced to me by one of our investors, and then Kate Luzio is the founder. And what they do in this place is like a co-working um, environment, if you will. But more than that, they focus on empowerment and growth and learning opportunities where we all share our stories and hopefully able, you know, help each other um, in any path that we're in in our business. I have to tell you, I checked the website out. It's super engaging and empowering. And if you're a woman in business and you're looking to, to connect to other women, feel free to check it out. Where can they find it, Daphna? I believe it's just luminary.com or weareluminary.com. Okay, great. That's so wonderful. Um, I just want to, before we close, jump back one more time to the tequila and, and talk about where people can find it, Cura Mia, make sure you check it out. I can't wait to taste it. Go to your local liquor store, ask for the tequila. It's very smooth, um, as Daphna mentioned, and uh, I know it's going to be fantastic because I know the quality that Daphna presents and delivers, so I can't wait to try it. I'm so excited for you, Daphna, and where can people find it? Thank you. You can find it anywhere in New York, anywhere in New Jersey, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, 
Um, it keeps on growing. The easiest thing is to go to your local liquor store, go to your favorite bartender, favorite restaurant, and ask for them to carry it. Everyone is able to get it through the distributors. Everyone works with the distributor, and we are with a major distributor in New York, Empire, and everyone who has a hospitality field um, and a bar has Empire or is working with Empire. So please do that. It helps us a lot. Brand awareness. Also have a find us or find our product on our website, which is curamiatequila.com. You can go on where to buy and it will, you enter in your zip code and it will give you the nearest locations. I just want to make the way you said that a sound bite. It's so hot. From the radio. Yeah, we need that. Say it again for us. Curamia. Oh, love it. Thank you. <laughs> She's amazing. I know. So authentic. Talk about authentic. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your whole story today. And, uh, you know, Daphne Mizrahi here, winner of Chopped, owner of Kiramia Tequila. Please check her out. Where can people find you online, Daphne? KuramiaTequila.com is our website. You can go on Kuramia Tequila online. You can also do Daphne Mizrahi online or Daphne's Kitchen, which is my website. And I often post videos and photos and, and recipes there as well. Thank you so much, Dapa. Thank you for joining us. And I hope to have you back right here live on set with the tequila. See you soon. Thank you. Jewelry, visit jadorfinejewelry.com.